It's Jeff Young, the Catholic foodie. Yay. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Well, Jeff, thank you for this interview. This is Jeff Young, and I'm interviewing Jeff Young with the Catholic foodie for the Holy Family Institute of the Pauline right. Family. And this is going on our Pauline website, um, especially the Magnify site for the Pauline Cooperators and for all the Holy Family Institute members. I'm Sister Margaret Carey behind camera, and Sister Anne is on the side. Uh, eating, a piece of cake. eating a piece of cake. We're at the Catholic New Media celebration, and yeah. we've had a great day so far, right? Yeah. It's like a family reunion. Yeah, it's like a family yeah. reunion. It really is. Can you go ahead and tell us your blog address and sure. some, what uh, you do? Catholic Foodie, it's uh, catholicfoodie.com, and if you don't know how to spell foodie, it has an I-E at the end, so catholicfoodie.com. It's a blog and a podcast, or an internet radio show. Oh. So, uh, come and see me over there. It'd be wonderful. How long have you been doing it? About a year and a half. A year and a half. About a year and a half. And Jeff interviewed me once, so that's how I got to really know right. the work that he's that's doing. Right. And he's very popular here at the Catholic New Media Conference, so a lot of people <laughs> know Jeff. Uh, Jeff, could you tell us a little about how you found out about the Holy Family Institute sure. and Father James Alberione? Ooh, going back a long way. Are we really? Yeah. Uh, really are. Yeah, I, I grew up in Baton Rouge, and Baton Rouge is, um, you know, we used to have the daughters of St. Paul in Baton yes, Rouge. Yeah. I was in high school. They had a, I was a, a there. store right there, right okay. outside the cathedral, yeah, I was at you that know, store. downtown Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. and I used to spend a lot of time there uh, and a lot of money. You know, I had my little <laughs> high school job so that I could go and spend money at uh. the store. <laughs> I was one of those weird uh, high school kids yeah, yeah. that went and bought all kind of spiritual books and yeah, I love my faith, so I say weird. I'm just, you know, teasing. But um, so that's when I found out about, you know, the Pauline family. And at the time, I really just knew that it was just the Daughters of St. Paul. I didn't realize we had all these other branches. And I guess it was, uh, let's see, it was after I got married, which was in uh, 98. Uh, after I got married, probably a couple of years later, I ran into, I take that back, when I was... Uh, much younger, still in high school, I found out from uh, Rosalind Curran. Oh, Rosalind, sure. Yeah, about uh, the Holy Family Institute. Ah. I thought that is so cool because we used to ah. talk. We would go to the same prayer meetings. Yeah. So I found out way back then. Well, after I got married, I remembered that, and so I was thinking, well, maybe I should check into this and see what it's about. I mean, I'm married now, and hey, you know. and uh, that's what I did. Contacted Father Tom, and he started to. Oh. Uh, correspond with me and sent me some materials and I showed it to my wife. We had a video to watch and some pamphlets and things to read. And we just loved the, the, the whole thing I think that drew us in is the fact that um, it's, it's making a deep commitment within the context of your marriage, right? Uh, and it's supposed to strengthen the, the family and yes. make God like more of the, the center of your life. Uh, so that really drew us in. Uh, that and the fact that, you know, we started learning about Blessed James, uh, Barione, we started learning about uh, this, this, this apostolate, this, this ministry of uh, the media. And of course, I'm a, I'm a geek, you know, I, I love technology and uh, just, I love gadgets, <laughs> you know. And then, but I see so much, so much potential there too for the church that um, it spoke to me again, you know. From the media side too, so the spirituality is very real. It's yes. very real, very practical. Um, it just really kind of spoke to us, and that's we decided to, to start that road, start that journey. So when you started Catholic Foodie, was it in the spirit of Father Alberione? Was it something you always wanted to do? And did the then the Pauline spirituality inform the work that you were about? How did yes. it come about? I started uh, actually podcasting. Uh, as a teacher, my, my lessons, and I also you know, was in charge of the confirmation program at our parish, and so I was podcasting those lessons too. And that was about four years ago or so I started that. So that was a long time ago, and I didn't start the Catholic Foodie until about a year and a half ago. So it started out as part of my ministry anyway, and so I saw that really as, I mean there was a, a link there, 
you know. I can't say that specifically Blessed James inspired me to do that. I can't mm -hmm. really say that is my yes, well, of course he did, right? But uh, 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 it's my kind of like my passion, and I followed yes. that. But there right. was a Follow definite passion. support yeah. and encouragement in the spirituality of the Pauline family. What part of the spirituality do you find really assist you in your daily? Life is it? You know, would it be the the secret of success about giving everything over to God, or would it be um, offering everything through the Pauline Offertory, um, or a particular prayer that you find really helps you when you wake up in the morning and kind of just covers your whole day? The Pauline Offertory is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And sometimes okay. I'm praying it, and I think you know it's almost too much. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's too yeah. much at one time. <laughs> and I remember reading something a while back, um, uh, Father Tom suggesting, he says, you know, sometimes just take one part of it, oh, you know, and kind of focus on that for the day. Because I think sometimes, you know, with little kids running around, we can get kind of overwhelmed. But I had to tell you, I can't do that because I'm a perfectionist, and so I have oh, to do no. the whole thing, you know. But one part of it may stick out to me on a particular day and kind of does color my day, you know. Okay. Kind of becomes a mantra or something you remember. That's right. Okay. And for Catholic foodie, what is your goal? I mean, it's all about good food and good restaurants, from what I can see. Good food uh, and faith. Good and, yeah. food and faith. Okay. And they kind of go together because you're from Louisiana. Uh, well, food means faith, right? It's Louisiana. It's New Orleans it's area. New Orleans. Well, Louisiana, Southern Louisiana, I should say. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, you know, if you go to. Um, bookstores, Catholic bookstores, and you try to find books on food and faith, you're going to find books that deal with the saints oh, and food, right. Feast day food, or liturgical seasons mm -hmm. and food, and that's great, and that's, that's wonderful, and I think we need that. you got several books that are out there like that, I love it. But my perspective is, is coming from Scripture, um, oh. because in the, from the from the from Genesis to Revelation, food is all throughout the Bible, and it, it, it tells us so much uh, as human beings, right? That relationship uh, it tells us so much, uh, uh -huh. and, and, and informs us, and also mm. is a sign and a symbol of uh, various parts of the spiritual life. For instance, sin comes into the world in Genesis through the act of eating. But then later you see in the Gospels that salvation comes into the world through the act of eating. And from Genesis to Revelation, going all the way uh, to the end in Revelation 22, you see everything pointing toward the, the, the wedding feast of the Lamb. Right? That's the whole point. Everything's pointing toward the wedding feast of the Lamb. So there's so much there. It's the covenant that Absolutely. enters right around yeah. that. The Which last supper, the, the shared meal. It's a shared meal. It's a family meal. Yeah. And there's something sacred about the family meal. So one of the things that I try to do, besides trying to bring the scriptural aspect of food to families is to inspire families to get back in the kitchen and cook, oh. to get back to the family table, to, to, the family to table, eat together yeah. because those meals are sacred, and um, to, to build up and inspire not only the, the family table in the home, but the family table in the church, in God's table, right? The Father, the table so of communion, the Father, right, right there at the Eucharist, yeah, Eucharist. Where, where is the family of God right there in the parish. So those are sort of my, my goals. That's, That's great. <laughs> it is a lot, but <laughs> starting out. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jeff. You're very welcome. My pleasure.